welcome back to the channel guys. This is the brand new ASUS ROG Strix Z690i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. This is not a review but a walkthrough and having a look of the content inside the box. Alright, here it is, the new ASUS ROG Strix Z690i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Here's the box. Let's just put aside the motherboard for now and have a look at what's inside the box first. First up, we have the internal USB 2.0 header splitter. This will be quite convenient in case you have a AIO or fan hub or ARGB hub that requires 2.0 headers and most of the ITX motherboard only comes with one headers anyway. So a splitter is a nice inclusion. Here is the antenna for the Wi-Fi 6E that is built in in the motherboard. ASUS also provided two SATA cables which is pretty much standard nowadays. I don't know exactly what you call this, but this is actually the front panel headers extension. Uh, so it will be easier for you to plug in all your front panel switches like the power switch and the reset switch and so on. Now this is something new. Asus called it the front panel SATA card, which has four SATA ports, an additional 3-pin 5W ARGB header, a front panel header and a what looks like a 4-pin speaker header. There is also two USB-C ports and I will show you later on where to install this. You also have some zip ties although I don't think it will be enough anyways but good that they included as well. We also have a spare M.2 NVMe drive toolless screw fastener. In the box, we also have one ROG keychain which will improve your gaming FPS by 20%. And then we also have a manual booklet which most people won't read anyway, but definitely useful for some beginners. One thing that I can still never understand is that manufacturers still include a disk for the drivers and installation and whatnot. Come on, who uses this anyway nowadays? Especially with an ITX board. And of course, the ROG Strix sticker pack which further increases your FPS by another 30% on top of the earlier 30% that you had already just now. Last but not least, we have a welcome card here. I have no idea why it's right at the bottom. But it says here, get ready to rock the gaming world with ROG Strix. As a member, I think they missed a word there. Of the elite gaming community, it's time to level up with Armory Crate. Blah 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 blah. And there you have it, that's all that is included in the box. Now let's move on to the motherboard. My first impression is that the M.2 covers are pretty high. In fact, it is slightly higher than the VRM heatsink and the rear I.O. covers. So this means a lot of low profile cooler might not fit, so do take note. And the reason it is so tall, it is because Asus double stack both the M.2 slots right in front, just like the outgoing Z590i motherboard. Alright, let's start from the bottom of the board. First, we have the front panel audio header, a 4-pin PWM fan header, a USB 2.0 header, and next to it, a 3-pin 5W ARGB header. And then we have the brand new full by 16 PCIe 5 slot. Moving on to the other side. This is where it gets interesting. You see two USB-C ports sticking out and this is where we plug in the front panel SATA card we've seen earlier. Right next to it is the front panel USB-C connector and then the USB 3 front panel connector as well followed by the 24-pin ATX power connector. And all these ports are obviously right next to the brand new DDR5 memory slots. Moving to the top, here we have the 4-pin 12V RGB header, two more 4-pin PWM headers, and last but not least, the 12V 8-pin power connector. Now let's take a look at the rear I.O. We have two USB 2.0 ports, a HDMI port, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, and then we have two Thunderbolt 4 USB Type-C ports. And then we have four more USB Type-A, two which is the 3.2 Gen 1 and another two 3.2 Gen 2 ports. And here you have the antenna module for the onboard Wi-Fi 6E. 
Alright, at the bottom we have the LED illuminated audio jacks and then we also have the BIOS flashback button, a clear CMOS button and an SPDIF out port. Nothing much is happening at the back, there is no backplate and no M.2 NVMe drive slot either. One interesting change with the LGA1700 socket is that now it opens the other way round. Instead of flipping open the cover from the bottom, now you flip up from the top instead. Although the pull lever still closes towards the bottom. The VRM of this motherboard has 10 plus 1 power stages with a combined total of 105M. A slight increment from the previous Z590i. The M.2 installation for both NVMe drive is also very similar to the outgoing z 590 i which is on a double stack style. Once you remove the top cover, you will be greeted with the first M.2 slot. Do note that the M.2 slots are still PCIe 4, we don't get PCIe 5 M.2 yet. And then in order to review the second M.2 slots, we gotta remove the ribbon cable on the side. Two more screws and slowly wiggle out the PCB and you will see the second M.2 slot. And yes, even the second M.2 slot is now PCIe Gen 4. Another interesting point that I would like to bring up is that the Z690i only comes with the DDR5 variation because uh, some other models, they do have both DDR4 and DDR5 variant to choose from but not the ITX version. Rest assured, a full build with this motherboard together with Intel's 12th gen Elder Lake CPU and the DDR5 RAM is incoming so be sure to subscribe turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss the video and that's all for today i will see you guys again in the next video